clearly driven by far-right hatred, but also all violent disorder that flares up, whatever the apparent cause or motivation. We make no distinction. All of it? All of it? Really? You think any of the British people believe you when you say this, Zama? Because they're not Ostama Bin Laden. Crime is crime. No, it isn't. Not in this country. The state police are racist bigots who judge people by the colour of their skin. This government and the entire state, top to bottom, is a quagmire of racism and sexism. And you're enabling certain types of people to commit crimes, whilst punishing those who complain that you're not enacting the law equally. Crime is not crime in this country. The state is the criminal here. And so to that end, I can announce today that following this meeting, we will establish a national capability across police forces to tackle violent disorder. These thugs are mobile. They move from community to community. And we must have a policing response that can do the same. Again, completely clueless. This is just another excuse to implement more totalitarian fascist measures on the British people who have been silenced by their fascist government. Shared intelligence, wider deployment of facial recognition technology, and preventative action, criminal behaviour orders, to restrict their movements before they can even board a train. In just the same way that we do with football hooligans. My Führer, are the concentration camps really necessary? How about just dealing with the criminals in society, which is what the so-called law system is meant to do? Have you considered that option, Mr. Starmer? Have you considered listening to what the people protesting and rioting are actually saying, Mr. Starmer? No. Instead of trying to address the problem, you're creating a shutstarmful. Okay, well, well done. You're creating a British SS, but keep telling us that you're not racist. And let me also say to large social media companies and those who run them, violent disorder clearly whipped up online, that is also a crime. It's happening on your premises and the law must be upheld everywhere. The people are out protesting and rioting because they're being shut down and ignored. They're being censored and falsely accused of being far right. And it is for this reason that they're out on the streets. And your response is to nationalise the social media companies? You really just don't get it, do you? That is the single most important duty of government. Service rests on security. And we will take all necessary action to keep our streets safe. The people are up in arms because you've failed to keep the streets safe, Mr. Starmer. They're complaining that you're not serving the people. You're not securing our streets. In fact, the racist state is enabling the crimes and encouraging them to occur. And instead of dealing with the criminals, you're brutally smashing the protesters and rioters. And you may, in the end, treat the symptom. You may, in the end, stop this set of protests and riots from happening. But the cause of the protests and riots has not been addressed. And the more you crack down on the skulls of the British working class, the more conscious they will be that their government is the criminal that needs to be opposed. My dad was a truck driver. I'm from the working class. The last couple of years I've graduated into the middle class thanks to YouTube, and I'm not pretending to speak on behalf of the workers or the middle income earners, nor the people from Southport. There are many sheeple I know who love nothing more than to not think and bend the knee to whatever the talking box tells them. But the reason I am making this video is because you're so completely clueless as to what is going on that I'm fearful that this chaos that you're stoking is only going to get monumentally worse. You are going to cause a violent revolution against yourselves, at which point all bets are off.
I don't want violence in the streets. I don't want gangs of thugs running about attacking each other. I don't want a new government to emerge that implements Fabian fascism, resulting in another killing fields of Cambodia. I want a peaceful resolution to this problem. But you're not listening. Neither is half the population. They're all so quick as to turn a blind eye to the men, women and children being destroyed by your failures, and label everyone far right that they're essentially complicit in these crimes. And whether you agree with what these people are saying or not, at least listen to them. Here is a woman speaking, and I don't care if you agree or not, listen to what she's saying. Sorry, just to add to that about this recent terror attack, I'm calling it, is the fact we've had 500 more illegals cross by boats just last weekend, and no doubt, basically all young fighting age men again. Like, I think people have to understand now that the government are complicit. They are acting treacherously against their own people. Every single illegal male they let in is a ticking time bomb and an extreme risk to innocent people in this country, children and women and elderly and any innocent member of the public. And they're all coming from Africa and Middle East and from gang cultures and areas that are basically taught to hate Christians and white people. You might get one in a thousand. That's a good person. That's just got mixed up along the way. It has to stop. And, you know, people on the radio just now are saying, oh, well, the authorities are trying to quell, you know, the information, the rhetoric, because they're, one, they're worried that the country's a bit of a tinderbox at the moment. And you look at Rotherham and Leeds and, yeah, but every time anything like that happens, it's not normal British folk, it's the same that are causing the issues that have these riots. Um, it's, the, it's the relative newcomers, sorry. And again, I don't give a crap about, when I say ordinary British folk, that's all sorts of colours, people. It's about, it's about people who come here with no intention of living like a Brit, who come here to take what they can and dominate and overwhelm another Christian society. Just my opinion. So this government, like the last, are utterly malfeasant and criminal in their continuing allowance of boats, of illegal men running up our beaches akin to world wars. I'm sorry, it's how it is. And every time something horrific happens, we all go, oh, how horrible. Oh God, this has to, st and, then, and then nothing, nothing. Oh, so polite. And I think us Brits for so long have just been the type that cue, that don't tend to say anything, that do what you're told, which is good. That's, you know, we're a good society, but we have been walked on and crap has been wiped on our backs with dirty boots. For too long like ser seriously like what other nation would put up with this i know a lot of europe's having the same but not in the same extent i think because of the size of our island it's just the impact's bigger but no country in the muslim world no country in the middle east no country in you know china or russia or no arab country would allow this can you imagine if coaches of white young males were to just barge into i don't know saudi on a daily basis and then they had terror attacks every month from another crazed white man um and bombing things and mass stabbing do you think they put up with it don't be ridiculous grooming gangs raping thousands of of saudi young girls it, it just wouldn't happen they'd all be slaughtered they'd be lined up and shot but here Come, welcome. Here's a hotel. Here's a, here's a buffet. Here's some spending money. Oh, there's a GP and a dentist for you. 
Aren't we lovely? Aren't we the best? Aren't we wonderful? Oh, we're so virtuous. And we're just fucking idiots. We really, really need to get a grip. And this bloody government, which are doing just abominations already within weeks of being in, we need to hold them to account. Our children deserve better. You may or may not agree with her. But it looks to me, Mr. Starmer, that your racism and the racism of the entire establishment was the cause of this issue. And the people are calling you out on it. Are the millions of working class people far right now, Starmer? Is the whole of the north of England far right now, Starmer? Are the conservatives, liberals, middle class parents and so on, are they all far right? Or have you falsely labelled them as such because you're a moron? Is it racist to call you a racist, Mr. Starmer? No, it's not. And enough is enough. I don't want to see violence on the streets. I'd rather be a peaceful resolution to this. But unfortunately, I am seeing the footage and I'm seeing the blood already in the streets. And I can't help but think that it's the establishment's hands that are running red right now. And sadly, I don't expect the Starmhelm to listen. In fact, not only is he not listening, but other members of Parliament are not listening either. Here is a Labour Party member of Parliament, Charlotte Nichols, saying, Seeing a lot of chat about how it's not fair to call those rioting far right, and people making excuses for them. If you're doing Nazi salutes on the streets of Britain and engaging in violent disorder, you don't have legitimate concerns. And you're not a patriot. End of. And yes, you have spotted two Nazis. Maybe, because the guy on the left looks like he's pretending since he's laughing and holding up the wrong arm. But yeah, there's a handful of Nazis knocking about. But they are the tiny minority. Perhaps a couple hundred at most. The vast majority of the people who are out on the streets are not Nazis. And you have branded them as such. But this is a ridiculous and inappropriate response to what's happening. For decades now, you have suppressed speech and ignored the voice of a large portion of the population. Your Marxist ideology brands every white person a racist Nazi, whilst you pretend not to be anti-Semites. You're judging people by the colour of their skin, supposedly in the name of diversity, which is just a new way of saying racism. And when people try to complain about this, you brand them all far right and say they don't have legitimate concerns. Really. The people are complaining that you're not listening to them. So you dismiss them and then act shocked that they take to the streets to riot. You're a moron. Tens of thousands of people are taking to the streets across the entire country and they're not far right. When Oswald Mosley was knocking about, there was only a few hundred of them. Britain does not have a far right problem. We have a racist government problem. You are causing this backlash against you. You are stoking the flames and making the situation worse through sheer ignorance of what is actually going on or deliberately. If you continue to turn a blind eye to the problem, more and more people will take to the street. Also, is this a black Nazi now? Is this a black Nazi? She says he's rightly been arrested, as these two and anyone else doing it should be. Right. So we now have far-right black Nazis on the streets, do we? Are you going to acknowledge that you don't understand what's happening at all? And let me ask you the question. Why do you hate Nazis in the first place? If you're a bunch of Marxist anti-Semites, which is what your ideology is all about, why do you hate the Nazis? Is it because you're competing on the same ground? If you oppose Nazis when they look like this, but not when they look like this, then you're not anti-Nazi. And no, they're not anti-Nazi. They're just pretending they are to win votes. The Labour Party and the entire establishment hate the Jews, as evidenced by recent events, and as can be proven by simply reading their Marxist literature. Miss Nichols, your tone-deaf response is very disappointing. I'm not a Nazi. 
I'm not doing Nazi salutes. I'm not rioting. But I do want to see an end to the violence, which is why I'm making this video. You're completely off the mark here. And yes, there are a handful of Nazis in the crowds. Amazing. But the majority are not far right. What you're looking at are the genuine concerns, the legitimate concerns of the British people. Be they working class, conservatives, liberals, the Irish, myself, because I'm none of the above. We do want equal treatment. We want peace on our streets. You, the racist establishment, have allowed violence on our streets for decades. And when the people try to complain about it, you ignore them, censor them, arrest them, or worse. Donna Jones is the police and crime commissar for Hampshire and the Isle of Wight, and she released a statement on the 3rd of August 2024. Some have claimed it was false, but I read it at the time, and though it has been modified since, it still retains most of the stuff people have shared online. As Alex Armstrong states, This is leadership. Donna Jones has put the Prime Minister and Home Secretary to shame. This one letter sums it up. I encourage everyone to read it, especially Labour MPs and government ministers. They won't, and clearly aren't, getting better advice anywhere else. She said, The rioting and civil unrest across the country following the murder of three children in Southport on Tuesday has escalated to a worrying level. Police officers have been injured, buildings have been targeted because of those living in them or worshipping at them, and police cars and vans set on fire. Millions of pounds of damage has been done and more than 100 people have been arrested with many more expected. Police stations are burning, police officers' annual leave has been cancelled, and riot police are dusting off their shields from Land's End to John O'Groats. The behaviour of some of those protesting has been extremely violent, highly distressing and absolutely criminal. This weekend, a number of protests are planned across the country and across political and ideological spectrums. Let me just read that again. Across political and ideological spectrums. That's right, this is not the far right. The announcement of the Prime Minister's new Waffen-SS has led to an accusation of two-tier policing, which has inflamed protesters who state they are battling to protect Britain's sovereignty, identity, and stop illegal immigration. Burning towns and cities and attacking the police is not the answer, so how do we stop it? I've spoken to people from both sides of the political spectrum, and the only way to stem the tide of violent disorder is to acknowledge what is causing it. Whilst the devastating attacks in Southport on Tuesday were a catalyst, the commonality amongst the protest groups appears to be focused on three key areas. The desire to protect Britain's sovereignty, the need to uphold British values, and in order to do this, stop illegal immigration. The growth of feeling across the country has mirrored, to a lesser extent, the rebellion to illegal immigration that has played out across France over the last 12 months. The government must acknowledge what is causing this civil unrest in order to prevent it. Arresting people or creating violent disorder units is treating the symptom and not the cause. The questions these people want answering, what is the government's solution to mass uncontrolled immigration? How are the new Labour government going to uphold and build on British values? This is the biggest challenge facing Sir Keir Starmer's government, and it's bitten quickly. As a national police leader and a police and crime commissioner, someone who has spent almost two decades representing the public, this is the clear message I want to put to the Prime Minister and Home Secretary this week. We all need to work together to stop this mindless criminal behaviour committed by a small number of people, whilst understanding the views of those attending rallies who feel strongly but don't cause disorder. Fantastic. At least someone is listening. She's not 100% here, but she's giving it her best, so hats off to her. But unfortunately, this slow response was far too late to stop the fighting from escalating. Now, while I totally understand the Muslim community for doing this, 
and I'm not criticizing them for taking to the streets like this in response to the violence against them. I have to highlight this purely to show how unequal the government response has been. I can't show some of the attacks that some Muslims have been inflicting against white people across the country, or vice versa, because they're too horrific for YouTube. But look at the response here. How many members of the Muslim Defence League <clears throat> will be arrested in Stoke for openly carrying weapons? Will there be a special police force to tackle Islamic hate gangs? Will these thugs receive banning orders? Two-tier Starmer and Labour are spineless. Where's Aaron? Where's Aaron? Up there! Up there! Up there! Where's Aaron? Where's Aaron? And if I walk down the street with a weapon, I get arrested. But because the government has decided that these particular people are exempt from the so-called law, they can get away with it. And I don't care what your reasoning might be, it's as simple as this. If you cannot implement the law on them, then don't implement it on me. If you're not willing to take their blades off them, don't take them off me. If they're allowed to walk around with a sword, I should be able to walk around with a sword too. And if you say, no, they get to walk around with weapons and you don't, that's racism. Now, obviously, the Muslim Defence League is not a real thing, just like the EDL is not a real thing. But since the government is calling the English far-right EDL members without a shred of evidence, the people are calling them the MDL as a way to call out the BS. Of course, some sheeple are completely clueless, but anyone with half a brain can think through the logic. There's no such thing as the Muslim Defence League, you bad maths. Literally just another thing bigots have made up. Did it take you long to tie your shoelaces this morning, sir? If fascists are bust into rioting towns, they're going to meet pockets of resistance from people wanting to protect their communities. It's as simple as that. Yes, they are, which is why I don't necessarily blame them for this response. If the government causes the English to rise up, and the Muslims rise up to defend themselves, then it's understandable. However, you've missed the point. When the racist, fascist government does nothing for decades, and then the English rise up after being silenced, you send in the stormtroopers. But when the Muslims rise up, you hug them. Here are police officers in Blackburn joking and hugging one community while they systematically crush the other. There are loads of examples of this being posted, so look them up. It appears the Muslim Defence League, MDL, can roam the streets with machetes, hammers and 2x4 lumber and attack people unfettered. But police can intervene harshly against elderly and disabled people carrying placards. Does this seem right to you? And the question is, why aren't our police doing anything about this? What about this guy? Is he going to be arrested for carrying a machete? How about this crowd in Stoke? As a concerned citizen, I don't like seeing gang warfare on our streets. Is everyone here going to be arrested? And again, I'm only bringing this up as criticism against the government, not of the Muslim community. I want to see a peaceful resolution to this, and my concern is that the police and the government have implemented a two-tier system where white people and other minorities get punished, but others do not. That, to me, is government racism. It's not right. The government is at fault here because they are causing the problem. As someone else put, waiting for all the mainstream media to start telling us about the Muslim Defence League thus far. There is a legitimate concern here. Gang of eight attack two men wearing Union Jacks in Leeds. There's also other videos I won't show of brutal attacks with hammers and blades on white people in Leeds, and the police don't seem to be doing much. 
And I have family in Leeds. I have family in Leeds. And again, I'm not calling for persecution. I'm calling for law and order. I don't want to see the police stand by idly as one community hunts down another. I don't want to wake up one day to the news that my own family has been slaughtered while the police picked their noses. We cannot deny the evidence of our own eyes. Ordinary British people will not be silenced. Peaceful protest is the way. Enough is enough. When I was in the seventh grade, our teacher put on a video and told us to take notes. Ten minutes in, she threw the lights on and shouted at Stephen Webb Sladke, telling him he wasn't taking notes and he should have been. But the thing was, Steve was taking notes. I saw it. We all saw it. The teacher asked if anyone wanted to stand up for Steve. A few of us choked out some words of defence, but they were immediately quashed. Quickly, we were all very silent. Steve was sent to the principal's office. The teacher came back in the room and said something like, See how easy that was. We were reading Anne Frank. I started to understand. I just thought now was a good time to share this story. Don't ever let anyone tell you that what you see with your own eyes isn't happening. Again, super far right. Oh, and just one more thing. I found this bit of information on the elections of 2024. Labour celebrates victories but loses ground in urban and heavily Muslim areas. Party did better in places it had lost since 2016, but one commentator called it progress at a price. So Labour doesn't actually care about the British people because they just care about the Muslim vote. It also explains why they're so pro-immigration in the first place, because it's all about bringing in huge swaths of people who will vote for them. They don't actually care about the Muslims themselves, they're just being used to bolster Labour support for the elections. So literally, this entire thing is a sham. And here's the much-needed context to the problem that Parliament seems to be ignoring. The streets are unsafe, and the British people of all colours and creeds are beginning to notice why. A small breakdown of just one month of why British people are unhappy with mass immigration. July 4th, at the election, several Muslim MPs were elected to the House of Commons on the back of Free Palestine. July 11th, the new Labour government announced it would release 5,000 prisoners early in September, with most having served 40% of their sentence. July 15th, we learned London's Metropolitan Police had not solved a single petty crime, burglary, car theft, phone theft, in three years across 166 areas. This is absolutely true, by the way. And it's not just this police force, that are this terrible. It's all of them. They're all terrible. July 17th, it was reported that a Jordanian refugee, Mustafa al mubaden who had assaulted a female police officer in Bournemouth, was spared community service on the grounds that he cannot speak English. So, I can get away with crimes if I don't speak English now? Is that how the law supposedly works in this country? July 18th, two asylum seekers, these two, who stole a Rolex worth £25,000 from a tourist, were spared jail. That's more than a year's worth of money on minimum wage, by the way. July 18th, that same day, mass rioting in minority communities broke out in Hare Hills, which is in Leeds, after social services took four Romani children into social care. I have a very, very, very close source on that one but I won't say any more. July 18th, rioting broke out in East London's Bangladeshi community following political unrest in Bangladesh, with rocks thrown at police officers and cars smashed in communities that are majority Muslim. July 23rd, it was announced that Anjem Chowdhury, Britain's most famous Islamist, was to be sentenced for directing Islamic terror on Britain's streets. It's taken them decades to stop this man. 
and he's converted so many people to extremism as the government did absolutely nothing to stop him. So a lot of the problems we have on our streets, but also in the world, are as a direct result of the British state's inability to arrest this man and break up his organisation. July 23rd, a British army officer was repeatedly stabbed outside his home by Anthony Essen, a Nigerian immigrant. July 26th, protests broke out after footage emerged of Greater Manchester Police taking action against these two at Manchester Airport, who had severely assaulted armed officers. July 27th, six arrests were made after a drive-by shooting in the town of Watford. July 29th, reports emerged that a man had been stabbed to death with two others injured following a knife fight in a park in East London. July 29th, Southport there was a mass stabbing and murder of three children. He was a second generation immigrant and the state still hasn't said why he did it, but it's no wonder why people are putting two and two together. July 30th, a mass brawl involving machetes erupted on the streets of South End. July 30th, it was reported that a homeless Kurdish migrant had pushed a man into the tracks at a London underground station after feeling disrespected. July 30th, it was reported that another 3,000 migrants had entered Britain illegally on small boats since Labour took power less than a month ago taking the total number of crossings by mainly young male migrants from countries like these places to around 130,000. And it's not just about the violence, mind Starmer. The British working class thinks that they're coming here and they're taking our jobs, our pensions, our social housing, our benefits. You cannot get a doctor's appointment because the NHS is overrun. And it's also because the National Socialist Health Service is racist. They have racial and sexual quotas. They are judging people by the colour of their skin, or what kind of genitalia they have. Also, you have this Muppet from Scotland. You Suffer Under Me calls on Starmer to send in the army, and he wants the army to go into Northern Ireland. I think the Republic of Ireland needs to go, no you don't. No you don't. This man is literally calling for a jihad against the Irish people, and you're trying to pretend that people like him are not trying to sow division in our country. If you send in the army into Northern Ireland, you're going to have another guerrilla war on your hands. Do not send in the army. Not even into England. The solution to the violence is to cut the racist, woke nonsense and start listening. So, to my fellow countrymen of all colours and creeds, what we are seeing across this country right now are numerous battles between the British people themselves and a fascist government enabling this. These are the Storm Wars. All the so-called parties in this country are all establishment cronies. Even Farage is a member of the establishment, even if he's not a popular one. The Labour Mites, the Commiservatives, the Fibtar Democrats, and the Red Green Divs they're all the same. Our votes are a sham. We do not have a legitimate political system in this country. And the simple solution would be for our SS Stahnbannfuhrer to simply come out and say, we apologise for our poor handling of this situation, for failing the British people for decades, and for implementing a two-tier system that has enabled criminals to practically rule the streets of this country. We acknowledge your legitimate concerns, and we are now going to implement a proper system of law and order which treats everybody equally. We will listen to the people who have economic, social and political concerns about immigration. Recognise that we need to stop encouraging these people from coming over here and work to solve the issue. We will no longer police social media, nor will we shame you for waving an English flag. We are going to abolish the racial and sexual quotas we have set up in our government. We will abolish the BBC, and we will allow proper freedom of the press. We are sorry for what we have done, and we will make it right. If he said that, the riots will be stopping overnight. Of course, I'm not going to hold my breath. But if he's not willing to do that, then I think Starmer should resign. 
another election should be called because Labour have just lost most of their voter base. And if an election does happen, here's one thing we can all do, regardless of your beliefs. Next time there's an election, we need to spoil our ballots. Take out your ballot papers, scribble out all the boxes, and write next to them, no to nonces. Say no to the nonces. And when millions of ballot papers come back, and the establishment realises that the majority of the people are united in their opposition to them, we will have given them the biggest V for victory they've ever seen. At that point, they may start to listen to the people they've trodden on for years, and a new legitimate movement or two can emerge that are not puppets of the establishment. I think this week has shown us that we need to give serious consideration to setting up local, private police forces, local laws, local judges, and local communities. We need to abolish the state police and stop obeying the totalitarian morons in Westminster. And I know that might seem like a radical alternative, but if Parliament is unwilling to listen to the people, it is something we seriously need to consider. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.